How's everyone doing today? Hope you're having a great day, and I hope you're doing well. Now, today's video, our, our discussion, is going to be about kind of the new game. If you clicked on this video, you may be interested in it. If you're not, you know, you've kind of heard of Gaijin Entertainment, War Thunder, for example. This is kind of their new game, their kind of World War II shooter FPS, first person shooter. And it's called Enlisted, right? So what is Enlisted? Well, before I begin, I'm kind of going to go and dive down into it, right? Because it's a free-to-play game. So when it's free-to-play, there's some questions, you know, rising about pay to win, pay for fun, stuff like that. So we're going to go down the, the money model, right? Like the payment model. Okay, how does it work, right? From there, we're also going to talk about the campaigns, kind of what theaters of war are we talking about? And then lastly, is it worth it? So let's kind of dive in first with kind of what is Enlisted, right? So it's a World War II FPS first person shooter that's free to play. So you can download this right now, it's an open beta. So you can download it, you can try it out for free. So you'd be like kind of the gameplay, stuff like that. And kind of the gameplay is kind of an in-between of Battlefield and Arcade. And they can compare it to other games like Postscriptum and Hell Let Loose. Kind of less hardcore as those. Or it's not even like Arma, right? It's not gonna be an Arma, it's not gonna be a Mel Sim. It's just going to be a basic kind of in-between arcade and realistic kind of gameplay. And that's kind of similar to kind of how War Thunder is, if you're familiar with playing that game. So going off to the payment method, right? The, is it free to play or is it really pay to win? So going through right now, it's a freemium, right? So what I mean by freemium is that you pay for convenience. So how it works so far, and we'll kind of dive down into the campaigns and talk about that later. But usually how Enlisted works is you select the theater of war you want, right? And this is gonna kind of blend into the campaigns. So basically you have, as of right now, you have the Battle of Moscow, right? So this is early 1940s, 1941, 1942, Germans and Soviets going at it. Then you also have the Normandy campaign. So 1944 is United States versus Germany, right? So that's kind of the campaigns you have right now at the moment. The other ones that are coming soon is the um, Desert Campaign in North Africa. They're going to have British and the Germans. And then lastly, kind of the final days of the Third Reich, which is the Battle of Berlin. So you have Germany versus Russia, late War II, 1944, 1945. So kind of with this campaign, right, the freemium comes in is how it works with the campaign is basically you have your campaign level. So right now, for example, I'm playing the Battle of Moscow campaign and I am focusing on Germany. So if you go look inside the game, it'll tell you, hey, this is your campaign level, this is where you're at. Because when you first start the game, you're gonna have to choose what side you wanna start off with. And then it will start unlocking everything and showing kind of how it works. So the campaign level basically is showing you, hey, if you keep playing this game mode and earn XP, then you go and cure kind of these unlocks as you go across the levels. I think something like level 50 or something. But each level you either unlock a new squad, a new weapon, a new vehicle, tanks and stuff like that. So kind of going into it, right? That's kind of where it's at. Now we're talking about freemium, right? So what does this tie in? Well, of course, if you pay for like, I think 15 bucks a month or whatever, you get premium for 30 days. So that's like double XP, right? So that makes the grinding and everything a lot easier when it comes to the, the uh, campaign. Now on top of that, you also have premium squads. And they, of course, kind of like War Thunder, or you play World Tanks, they give you more XP bonuses on top of that XP, right? So you can go and kind of have a squad that's already maxed out. You don't have to worry about giving them perks or anything like that. And they can just go out to battle and do great things, right? So this is kind of going into the payment model, right? You already got your grindy, right? Unlocking gear and stuff like that. On top of unlocking gear, squads, and stuff like that, you also have a squad-based mechanic. And kind of how it works with squad, because I play the squad game mode, that's kind of the main game mode, really what it is. And if you're unfamiliar with the squad game mode, it's basically you have squad of infantry versus other people's, other opponents' infantry, and you kind of go at it with that. So how this works is your squad, by default, it's going to be kind of scrubby. And it's going to be a one, and how it works is you got one to five star soldiers. So if you have a soldier that's only one star, they're not going to have many perks. They're going to be slower at running, slower at recovery, 
when they're shooting, they may flinch more just because of, you don't have these perks that negate these factors, the kind of perks that you get. It's not like Call of Duty perks, right? Not, not in game breaking, but you know, it just m makes the quality of life a lot easier to control that soldier and make that soldier perform a lot better. The same, the same thing with the squad mechanics goes into vehicles too. And there are vehicles in this game, tanks and planes, and they're kind of like that semi-realistic thing. It's not like Battlefield 5 where I can drive around with a tank in third person. It's more based on the crew. But it's kind of like I said, it takes the hybrid point to the point where it's a crew. If you have like a crew of five and a Panzer three, you can control a gunner and drive the tank around at the same time. You don't need like multiple people operating the tank, which makes it easier. Now, of course, if that crew member gets killed and stuff like that, then it reduces the capability. So if I lost everyone in my tank besides the gunner, the gunner can still fire the turret, load, and everything, but that tank will not drive because you need someone to, to drive the tank, right? So there's that. Now, with the squads and everything for tanks, stuff like that, it's just perks incre increase the reloading, uh, decrease the reloading, make sure it's quicker, make sure you switch crew faster, you can repair the tank faster. Those are the perks um, that go into kind of talking about the tankers. Now, pilots, for example, the only noticeable perks I see for pilots is it's of course, you know, reducing the blackout and red out when you're dive bombing, let's like say in a Stuka, and you're trying to go and dive out. If you have a new, kind of a new pilot, like a one star or only two star, that pilot may be weaker at controlling the aircraft compared to like a three star. And some other perks I noticed too is, you know, if you have your pilot, you can kind of see a lead indicator too for uh, enemy aircraft, whereas, when you don't have like a new pilot or a level one pilot, you're not gonna get those perks. And it won't like kind of see, hey, this is an enemy aircraft flying around. It won't do that. So that's kind of like a disadvantage, right? Now the problem too with this freemium thing is everything that I just explained that you can earn through XP and by playing the game, you can also pay for it in currency, right? So this is kind of the question when you get someone that comes in and they call them, you know, whales, they go dump, just buy everything out, right? Does that make that person better than you? if you're just starting off? And the, and the answer is yes, but also no. Because the no factor can be is, it's kind of like, um, let's say I racing, if anyone's played that, right? If you put me into the top tier NASCAR, and I just, I'm new to sim racing or anything like that, I just pay my way all the way to the top, and I do my first race with everyone else who's been racing for a while and playing the game, I'm gonna wreck on the first lap compared to everyone else, right? Because they've been playing it longer, they're more experienced. So yes, you can whale your way through, but are those whales really going to be at a distinct advantage versus someone that's been playing the game, knows the mechanics, and everything like that? That's where it kind of crosses the line, right? Now, of course, if you're someone that plays a game and knows exactly what they're doing and everything, and decide to go do that, then yes, there's kind of the gray area of that. And the best part can be explained with vehicles and tanks and stuff, right? Someone can go get, I know the Russian tanks are kind of a little stronger right now in the Battle of Moscow. The same with the Normandy campaign. The German tanks are pretty, pretty strong. So someone could kind of free their, you know, grind their way through or just pay their way through, get the top tier German vehicle and be facing against a steward. And that's kind of what happens too. There's no like, I was under the impression when I first played it, it was kind of like tiered. So as you unlock the levels, uh, campaign levels, you'd be matched with people that have those levels, but not really, it's a free for all really. So there is a kind of a risk reward with it too, which is kind of cool that you can kind of club other players that are kind of new to the game, right? But as a new player, do you want to be dealing with that? Yeah, that's kind of one of the gray areas with it. So the campaigns right now, like I said, that's where they're at. Um, that's the ones they're focusing on right now. I personally like the Battle of Moscow campaign compared to the Normandy campaign. And the reason why is because it's more close, close range combat and there's less foliage and everything. The Normandy campaign is very difficult to play for me for because it's just a lot of range combat, right? And some of the weapons that you get, especially starting off as the US, are weaker and compared to the Germans, like the Car 98. Very, very good weapon that the Germans have in Army. But for me, when I'm playing US, it's kind of hard to play with just using the Enfield or just the Springfield, a World War One weapon, right? It's kind of like, where's my M1 Grand, which you have to unlock down the road, and it's kind of in a hot minute in the campaign to get it. And same with the M1 Carbine, it's kind of like, ugh. So, those, I, I feel right now, that old Moscow, and I did oh, um, closed beta testing, that's kind of like where you want to start because I feel it's the most balanced. Battle, uh, the Normandy campaign, I just feel it was kind of added, slapped on, and it probably needs some rework, refining before it kind of gets, you're just, you know those two in the maps, the maps are just way too spread out. 
and it's just coming to the point where you just get some guys just sitting in a far distance sniping people off and you're just like cool I just spawned in here with a BAR which I can't even use in range combat because the guy's so far away I can't even see him right so not really fun the battle of Moscow is definitely the way to go right now so anyways going into it is it worth it right so my personal opinion yes because this is what Battlefield 5 should have been despite all the controversy and everything that was around it this was literally I mean, yes, it's starting off and they, they could either go really well or they could go really south, right? With kind of how unless it's going, right? But for now, do your research when it comes to buying premium packs or investing money in this game, right? Because right now the machine gun offer bundle they have on the site, I believe it's still up there for a little bit. I would definitely recommend if you're interested in like playing it, download it, test it out. If you really like it, then invest into that, right? And the machine gun perks is like kind of a OBT, I think, um, pack or whatever. And the reason why it's good is because it's going to be like the last time they sell like level five soldiers, right? They, they made a thing going forward, hey, we're going to sell level four. And that's why I have like level five, because um, I, I got the closed beta test. So I got some machine gunners and stuff like that, or assault squads for a battle of Moscow. So kind of going forward, right? When they have packs on their websites, like the starter pack, I don't recommend that starter pack because I thought it was squads at first. It's kind of misleading like that, but it turns out you're just getting soldiers and some weapons, right? So personally, if you're gonna go play, download it, test it out. If you really like a campaign, you really like how it plays, then as you progress through, look at the logistics and either buy a premium squad, at least have one or two premium squads going forward. Whatever you do, however, do not pay money to go and buy equipment, right? You earn this equipment, Kind of through drops and kind of how it works is you do the daily roulette daily schedule and then you get clicks saying oh hey you, did, you got so many kills or you got so many captures yeah so that's another topic or video i can have it's just kind of right now this is general awareness of what enlisted is so if you're interested in playing definitely download it check it out if you like battlefield if you like kind of call of duty-esque type of gameplay go for it if you're more of an arma or hell let loose or postscriptum and you really like those mill sims it's gonna be a little casual compared to it, so just keep that in mind. But like I said, the economy is kind of tricky. Don't fall into it. If you really like it, go and download. Um, I mean, go buy premium, and then if you're really, really into it, get a squad and all that. But don't be aware of the money sink because it's there. It's kind of confusing, and you can fall into it. Now, for the rest of my viewers on my channel, if you made it to this point and you didn't match the thumbs down button. Appreciate you all sticking around. Thank you for your constant support. I see we're rising in subscribers and I've taken like a big hiatus from this channel and definitely seeing it grow and everything. I really appreciate that. So moving forward, just throw out ideas. If you want more content from Enlisted, gameplay or just stuff like that, let me know. I figured I'd just throw it out since I've been playing it. I've also been doing stuff like iRacing too. So if you want me to give it tips and tricks just to starting off that game, it's actually pretty fun. I like it. Kind of annoying too, dealing with other racers in the community. So it's crazy. Um, but other than that, like I said, leave your suggestions down below. Um, join the Discord if you haven't. Post your uh, suggestions in there for other videos, future content. Appreciate all your support and helping this channel grow. So other than that, I'll see you later. Goodbye.